So I'm just going to move right to Ecuador and I'm going to have house servants. I'm going to live like a king. Nah, I don't think so. But let's look at that. Here's your story. Let's begin. The water's fine. Come on, dive in. The future's here. It's right before your eyes. Oh, look. This is where the magic happens. So I've heard a few times, I've been posed the question a number of times, since the cost of living is so low, can I go there and live in a big house and have servants to clean the house and do my laundry? And uh, can I have a driver and all of these things and I can still do it on my social security of $1,200 a month? I... I don't even know what to say to those kinds of things, except, are you crazy? I, I don't know, I guess maybe it would be nice. I have somebody come once a week and clean. But, all right, I wanna preface this by saying, I am not going to give any kind of legal advice, so I'm gonna be as vague as possible while still putting out some information so that you know how to check up on it. And I strongly suggest before you ever start a business, sign a contract, um, hire an employee that you talk to a, an Ecuador lawyer. And I'm serious about that. Uh, it's probably going to cost you $20 or $30, but it could save you thousands of dollars. So let's talk about um, housemaids, house servants, things like that. There's plenty of people that will come and clean your house. And there's plenty of them that would like to come and do it as a full-time job. And what would it cost you? Maybe $150 a week, maybe, maybe less. But there's a catch to it, isn't there always? When you have somebody full-time or close to full-time, you're going to have to give them benefits. You're going to have to, uh, uh, medical benefits, you're going to have to um, give them extra money. I think it's, uh, again, this is going to be vague and I'm not even sure, it's been a while since I looked at it, but I think for every year you owe them two months extra salary, something like that. I know there's two months in the year where you have to double pay, so something. Again, vague out of ignorance and vague out of I can't tell you anyway. And on top of that, things change all the time. There's a reason why so many houses and apartments of, I would say, upscale have maids quarters that basically they all go unused. There was a time before this last regime kicked in its um, so-called wonderful labor laws there was a time when you could afford to do that. You could afford to hire somebody and keep them on full time and keep them employed. And that was a good thing. Uh, I've got um, several friends whose mothers used to do that and no longer do it, lost those jobs. The reason those rooms are empty is because of the cost of labor. Let me give you an example of how it can cost you a fortune. Let's say you bring somebody in and you're gonna be real slick and you're gonna do it under the table or you're gonna follow the laws and you're gonna do it above board. It won't matter for this little story that I'm gonna tell you, this little warning that I'm gonna give. So you bring this person in and she's gonna clean your house and she's gonna come by Monday through Friday or Monday through Saturday or whatever and you find out after the first week she's stealing from you now I don't want to say Ecuadorian people as a whole are very honest people but there's thieves everywhere so that's an example so let's say that she's stealing from you or if you don't like that example let's use another example let's say she just does a crappy job 
Maybe you decided, she decided that once she worked there for a week or two, that she's no longer going to clean a toilet or she's no longer going to clean a shower because she just doesn't like to do it. Whatever the case may be, you've decided this is not the person for you, this isn't what you bargained for, you know, you're just going to have to cut her loose. Well, that's all well and good. But it may cost you a thousand, two thousand dollars. You say, wait a minute, I was paying her under the table. Isn't she just as culpable as me and so she's not going to report me? No, that's not the way it works. She's not culpable. You are. And if you paid her under the table, then on top of whatever it is you might have to pay her out of your pocket for getting rid of her because she ripped you off or whatever it was, uh, you might also have to pay some fines and penalties. So you're going to get screwed big time. And, and it's a sad situation. Now, if you bring somebody in for a couple hours once a week, like I do, you don't really have any issues. But I see all the time people before they come here or people when they first arrive, one of the things they want to do early on is to, you know, be able to kick back and relax go off for the three or four days and not have to worry about their house and their property. And you know, if they've got somebody living there taking care of the house, then yeah, I, I get that. I understand it happens all the time. It's not realistic. Unless you want to pay a lot of money and a lot of benefits for that. Now, that might make sense for you and you can do that. But when you take on an employee here, it's almost like you take on family in that, oh my God, is it tough to get rid of them? So you need to think about that. Um, if you had the idea that you're going to come here and live like a king and have servants and all of that kind of thing, it's, it's, it's really, it's not going to be like that. So um, I hate to disabuse you of that notion, but I'm going to. And the last thing I'm going to say about it is what I said in the beginning. Before you make any moves to open a business, to hire an employee, to do anything like sign a contract, you need to get legal advice. Now, I see all the time on the Facebook pages, people ask these kinds of questions. And that's okay, you can ask the questions, because sometimes it might point you in a direction. But do not take that Facebook information as legal advice, as gospel. If I see posts and there's 10 responses, seven of them are probably crap. Seven of them are probably wrong. There's several posters that you see all the time that are always wrong. I don't, I just don't even know why they respond. They never get it right particularly when you get to visa questions and that sort of thing. And, and you just can't rely on that as good information. You can rely on it as anecdotal information of what happened to someone. For example, when I did my visa, I ended up running into all kinds of obstacles, consequently missing some deadlines, and at the end of it all, paying several thousand dollars more than it should have and taking four or five months longer than it should have. Was my situation typical? No. But I would tell that story if somebody asked because it is a warning bell of what can happen to you. doesn't mean it's going to happen to you. So if you have a legal consultant that knows what they're talking about and they're current on labor laws or visa laws or that sort of thing, then you're going to be much better off and be more secure in the information that you're getting. If you've got a business that can actually help you navigate some pitfalls to set it up, and maybe after five to seven years, you might have yourself a business. So, okay, a little tongue in cheek, but that's true for a number of people I know that have businesses. And there's other people who manage to sail through. So um, it's a minefield here to navigate through. And you need to know your way. You need a map of those mines. So, 
Um, I hope that helps. Oh yeah, by the way, people that ask me, do I have a toupee? Because one day I was down in town and it was raining and my hair was kind of, I don't know, it did look kind of weird because it was wet. And I didn't, I didn't have my hat because I don't really wear this hat except for these videos. And so I was down in the town and I did a video and I turned and I was talking into it about something. And, and so I got two emails and one comment on, on YouTube about the toupee on my head. And is that why I wear a hat to hide it? Um, no, this is my hair. I don't dye it. It's, it's real. Um, I only wear the hat because I have to do something with it. I did, really don't want to throw it away. So, see you later. You know you're cool.